between late April and July, every year, something pretty incredible happens. A small bird called a swift embarks on a grand journey, covering 3,400 miles, darting from the savannas of Africa to towns and cities in Europe and back again. And during the one-way journey, they never land. They eat, sleep, and even mate whilst in the air. Pretty impressive. They only land in their destination to breed and take a little rest. And back in the day, this all went smoothly. Here in the UK, they'd find a safe place to nest in, usually in the crevices and nooks of old buildings, they would breed and everything was on track. But as we started to modernize and renovate houses, we've removed essential nesting spaces for these really important birds, which has led to a staggering 60% drop in swift population since 1995. And swifts are now on the red list of birds of conservation concern. And as the UK government doesn't seem to be in any rush to protect nature, it was again up to individuals to do something about it. And this is where I introduce you to an absolute hero, John Stimson. John is an 81-year-old retired salesman from Cambridgeshire who witnessed the cries of the Swifts as they couldn't find a place to land. He's now single-handedly helping to save the UK Swift population by building Swift boxes from the garage of his bungalow, and I'm not even exaggerating. In his lifetime, John has built over 30,000 homes for Swifts, enough to house half the UK's breeding pairs of Swifts, and he's not gonna stop until he's built 40,000. In today's episode, we're gonna meet John to hear his story. He's gonna show us how we can make our own Swift boxes to be part of the positive change too. And I've got a bunch of other good news stories to make you feel a bit more hopeful at the end of this video too. Let's go meet John. So John, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into making Swift boxes? I took an early retirement at 58, and then I'd got to decide what I was gonna do. You can't do nothing. When you're retired, it is so easy to sit in a chair, switch the television on, pick the newspaper up and nod off. It is the easiest thing in the world to do. It's also the quickest thing to do to get in a box. I'd started making one or two bird boxes for family. And we went to a talk given by a gentleman called Edward Meyer. It was really inspirational. I've always been fond of nature from the day I was born, I think. And uh, as we were coming out, he tapped me on the shoulder and said, oh, can you make swift boxes? I'd never made a swift box in my life. <laughs> no idea. Got home here, had the plans and had a look at them. So I started making them. That was on a Tuesday night. So I think Edward must have gone straight back, put me on their website because Saturday I had an order come for four boxes. By the end of the first month, I think it was 98 boxes I actually wanted. And I'm starting to panic. <laughs> <laughs> so it kept building and building and I was starting to spend eight hours, nine hours, ten hours out in the, the uh, garage. And that's how it all started. And there are a lot of people now making uh, swift boxes, various shapes and designs. I don't care what shape and design they are as long as they're actually doing something. I can't go on forever. I'll have a damn good try, but... but um... <laughs> I've seen some boxes which have like webcams where people can like watch the swifts inside their own boxes. Yeah. And that feels like such a great way, uh, not only just for kids, but for whole families to get interested in nature. And I think once you see them use that habitat that you provided, it feels addictive and you just want to keep helping out. Why should people care about swifts? One solitary bird travels from Africa to England just to nest. And then it goes back to Africa. You know, you see a bunch of them together. And the whole bunch comes screaming between buildings. It's just as though they're saying, Okay, this is a marvellous life. The least we can do is make it welcome. And by making it welcome, I mean supplying it with somewhere to live. I can remember as a child in the village where I was living, it was a very small village. The Swifts would be flying around plenty of places to nest. Do Swifts make noise? Like if you did have a Swift house on the side of your house and you were a light sleeper, would you be able to like hear it during the night? Well, no more than any of the other smaller birds. Yes, you'll get a bit of tweeting, but come on, at the end of the day, you know, for, for a month, Surely we can live with that. I know there's a lot of news around declining insect populations too, uh, with swifts as well. Like, have you noticed firsthand how this has affected your, you know? Yeah. At the end of the day, without the insects, none of us are going to survive. It's, it's as simple as that, because it's not just the birds, but it's the animals. They rely on it and we rely on the insects as well. We're an animal at the end of the day. My parents and my in-laws all lived in the little village, which is 60 miles away. In our early days, the screen would be cleaned. The time we got to, to Langton, we'd have to clean the screen before we came back. Now, we can go there and back a dozen times 
there's no marks on the screen. So that is proof enough that insects have declined, dramatically so. And it wasn't just John that noticed this either. A survey was done counting the insect splats on vehicle number plates, which revealed a 58.5% drop in flying insects in the UK between 2004 and 2021. Can I ask you one question? Why do you love Swift? I love them because they're absolute miracles. They're, it's a miracle bird. Think about it. Think of where they've come from, where they're going. They pair for life, so I've been told. They're, they're such a magical creature. To me, they always seem to be full of joy, full of life. It's just a pity there aren't more of them to do that. And we could make it so there are more of them. And, and that, that would be, uh, yeah, I could die a happier man. Very much so. Next, John took us into his workshop to show us how to make our own Swift boxes. If you're interested in making one yourself, the templates are available on this website here, which I'll put a link to in the description below. To start making the box, we've obviously got to have the timber cut. Um, normally a sheet of this timber is eight foot by four foot, but because I'm quite short and getting old, it's best if I have it cut down. So the timber merchants kind of cut it down in half for me to make it four feet by four feet. So I'm now going to switch the saw on. So that's the four by four piece cut down. This we'll then cut down. These will be the ends. So we can start making the box. Now we have the, the back ready cut down to size and angled for the back. So we put the back in like so and these are the two ends making sure you've got them lined up right is one of the most important things to make sure you get right if you don't get them lined up correctly to start with then the whole thing will be at an angle and make it more difficult. That's the back and the sides completed, like so. And that's how it's going to be. That's the base. And again with the base, that's cut at the angle. It's a 30 degree angle. All the angles are 30 degrees, which makes it easier. Make sure that when you are drilling the sides onto the base, watch where you put your fingers. So that's now the base, if you can imagine it. That's the base. Now we want the bit that's coming up the front, which I've already cut, which is that one. Now this is just an oblong piece of wood with a hole drilled out, which is 70 mil long and 28 mil wide. That is crucial. The measurements for that are absolutely crucial. If you put more than 28 mil wide, then we tend to get other birds, like starlings in particular, will be getting in there. And uh, whilst I know we've got to look after the starlings as well, we're talking about swifts here. So that's the entrance hole side done on that one. And then we do the same on the other side. And that's those. We've just got to have the top for it and the nest form which goes inside and the nest forms are very well I think they're quite important because that's angled it just gives the birds somewhere to start their nest building and then we have them done and that's the actual box so that's the roof the roof is basically a piece of plastic which is a soffit board which you can get from any um, DIY place. They'll have these various widths. I use a 250 wide one and then shave a little bit off with my saw because that has to be cut at an angle. Again, it's a 30 degree angle. If you can imagine, that's the back. That also was a back, but because it's a little bit bigger than this, you have to just take a shaving, take about an eighth of an inch off here, so I run mine off on my other hand saw um, to cut that down. And then you put one on top of the other, hopefully it fits. 
and then we can turn it over and from one side we put in a screw now that hasn't that hasn't drilled into the plastic it's drilled into the wood which is screwed to the plastic and that wants two screws in and there we have one completely finished box all it wants then is two holes drilled one there one there and it can be screwed straight to the wall when the swift approaches it's anything between 17 and 20 miles an hour so if it makes a mistake gets its measurements wrong it's going to get one hell of a headache but that seems to work so what number would that that be did you have a running tally of uh, how many you've you've made um, as of last night it was 35,000 674. How can people support you? Is there a website where people can buy these from? If you look on the website, there's um, SOS Save Our Swifts is one, Action for Swifts is another one, and various little groups have got websites of their own that, that actually will sell the boxes. You can contact me through those, through many of those sites, you know, if I can help at all. Don't hesitate to, to phone me or email me. John was even patient enough to show me how to make one myself. Yeah, I've had quite a lot of people have had a go from scratch like this. How have they got on? And you're doing better than most. Oh, really? So that's on record. Now, now you've said that, I've started messing it up a bit. That's it. And that's, we've, that's, and that's your finished box. That's a finished one now. That's awesome. So would a singular one or a pair would then? It will be a pair. A pair, yeah. And that'll be their, oh. their mating ground. Yeah. yeah. Only, well, they're mating the air. That's what I'm saying, they do everything, yeah, that's why well, I say they do everything in the air. I haven't mastered that skill yet. So if you were to rate my first one out of ten, what would you rate? Oh, I think you'd get a seven out of ten. Seven out of ten, okay. I'll, yeah. take, I'll take seven. If I can make a 7 out of 10 Swift box, so can you. And to get all the details to make your own, just check out the links below. And if you don't fancy getting your hands dirty, but you still want to support John on his incredible journey in making 40,000 Swift boxes, you can find his email to get in touch with him on that site too. And the video wouldn't be complete without some more good news for you and reasons to be hopeful. So companies in the UK are actually now creating Swift bricks that replicate the tiny gaps under roofs where they usually like to live. They provide a safe place for birds like swifts to nest and rest, helping their populations recover. One UK company, Manthorpe, have built over 20,000 swift bricks so far that are made using recycled materials. And new laws to ensure the bricks are added to new homes are being more regularly discussed in the UK Parliament this year too. After a petition to make them compulsory reached over 100,000 signatures, which was set up by writer and campaigner Hannah Bourne Taylor. A 63-year-old bird lover and artist, Helen Lucy, also crafted an illustrative booklet on the decline of swifts, which persuaded housing developer Taylor Wimpy to integrate special nesting bricks in their upcoming East Leeds extension project. When we come together, we can push our leaders and representatives to discuss these super important issues. And while it may take a few tries to implement positive change, with the power of collective action, we can make it happen. So remember, your voice is important and essential in conversations about conservation. Try saying that 10 times. Talking of using your voice, I actually did a poll over on my Patreon asking people what they wanted to see in my next video, and helping create safe habitats for wildlife was the most voted for, so here we are. And I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful too. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on what's coming next. And if you didn't enjoy the video, blame the people in my Patreon who voted for it. But if you do want to have more input on these videos, get access to exclusive content, and hear a bunch of other good news stories to brighten up your day, please consider joining my Patreon community. Your support means the world to me and it really does make a difference in helping me bring these videos to life across all my social channels, which I hope can help create a lasting positive impact on our planet. Thanks so much for watching. Let's go save some birds.